Hey guys, um, continuing with our functions unit, we're going to start talking about how to not only like work with these functions, but how to graph these functions. And we're going to focus from graphing from tables. First off, learning objective, we have I can graph lines given information from tables and equations. Vocab for today, three words. We have relation and uh, I guess only two words, sorry. Relation and input output tables. <laughs> Um, relation is a general term for any set of ordered pairs. And we should have seen this one already. So I'm not too worried about writing this one down. We compared relations to functions just uh, a lesson or so ago. So don't worry so much about this one. But input and output tables. I'm talking about our input X's, our domain, paired with that output Y, our range, could look like this. Vertical table is what I, I uh, refer to them as. But it could be the same thing horizontally as well. Inputs versus outputs, domains versus ranges, same thing. Now, let's get to our examples. Given a table, can you graph it? Well, here's our table. It's a vertical table. It has our input values on the left, our outputs on the right. We're talking S versus H, S versus H. Now, S is 0, 1, 2, 3. H is 0, 12, 24, 36. What we're going to do is we're going to take each input versus output and graph them on our coordinate plane. Since everything was positive and 0, all we needed was the first quadrant of this coordinate plane. So example 1 starts off kind of nice. I'm looking at 0, comma, 0, my x, my y, my input, my output. So at 0, 0, put that first point down. Then do the same for the other points. I'm 1, 12. So at 1 all the way up to 12. Uh, their scale looks like it might be somewhere in between there. 2 to 24. Okay, 2, 24. Again, the scale's a little off. Looks like it's counting by 5, so 24 would be just a little bit underneath there. Uh, 3 and 36. Okay, 3 to 35, 6. So maybe a little bit above there. And now I've got my points. Given the table, for example, one. connect them with a straight line. Problem's done. You try. Given this table, can you graph the points? Here's what our graph should look like. And we're moving on from there. Example two, doing it again, given a table. Let's graph it. This time we've got negative values, so we're going to need the whole coordinate plane. <clears throat> Not just that first quadrant, but the whole coordinate plane. We're talking x's versus y's. And this time our variables match up. Inputs versus outputs, 0, comma, negative 1. So I go to the 0 first on the x-axis. Then I go to the y value, which is the uh, vertical axis. I go down one point and drop my dime. 1, comma, 0. Okay, 1 for the x. Zero for the Y means I don't have to move. So there's my point. Two comma one, two, and then up one. Okay, there's that point. Do you kind of see a pattern going on? Three comma two follows that same pattern. That's pretty nice. Connecting with that straight line. Example two is done. Taking a look at this one. Positive values so we can stick with that um, uh, first quadrant of the coordinate plane. All those positive values. 0, 50, 135, 220, 35. See what you can do. Making a straight line out of those, it's going downhill. It's going down pretty steeply. Graph should look something like this. Going to example three. Now you're given equations, and it could be a lot of different looking equations. What I want you to do is make that input output table, make that input output chart. I've got my X's and Y's. And I'm going to pick, like, small numbers so I don't have to do too much brain work. You know what I mean? Small numbers I pick is zero. So I plug that zero in, and then I solve for y. Two times zero makes zero. So I'm left with negative y equals five. I don't want negative y, so I multiply it by negative, which multiplies the other side by negative. Gives me negative five for my output. I could do the same thing with yet another small value. Let's say I'm talking about 1 
plug that one in. One times two is two. Minus five makes three. Switch the negatives around. I get negative three as that output. Uh, let's say another small value. How about two? Two times two makes one. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> two times two makes four. Subtract that four to the other side. Five minus four makes the one. Negative y equals positive one, which means positive y would equal negative one. So there's my input output table. I could put that together on my coordinate plane, zero comma negative five, one comma negative three, and then two comma negative one. Once I have my points, connect them, and my graph's done. I'm gonna skip this one here and get to our last example. Example number four. 3x minus 2y is equal to 4. So again, make that table. Make that input-output table. Then pick small numbers. I like starting off with 0. If I plug in a 0, this goes away completely. Negative 2 times uh, y equals 4. So that means I could divide both sides by that negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 gets me negative 2. There's my output. Do the same thing with some more values. If I plug in a 2, 3 times 2 makes 6. Subtract the 6 to the other side. 4 minus 6 makes negative 2. Divide both sides by that negative 2. Gets me positive 1. Do that again. This time I'm picking negative 2, which gives me negative 6. Add it to the other side to get rid of it. Makes that a positive 10. 10 divided by that negative 2 is where I get the negative 5. Plot those values, 0, comma, negative 2, 2, comma, 1, 2, comma, 1, negative 2, comma, negative 5. Connect those with our straight line. We're done. Try one more. You have x minus y is equal to 5. Set up your table. Set up a graph. See what you can do. My points I picked... 0, 1, and 2. Got me negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. Which turns out to graph like this. That's all we got today, guys. We'll, we'll uh, talk it up more in class.